We are live. Welcome to Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 8, Thoughts. This episode is called The Rescue. Spoilers for this episode and the movies. I like that we open in media res. Slave 1 chasing and attacking a transport with the Doctor on it. Epic shot when Slave 1 passes right in front of the transport. We see it from their point of view. From the point of view of the soldier who takes per Dr. Pershing as a human shield, the Rebel Alliance were terrorists. More Bo-Katan, very cool. I didn't know sidekicks were allowed to talk, and Boba responds with the Star Wars version of pot calling the kettle black. You are a clone. I've heard your voice thousands of times. Mine might be the last you hear. Badass fight. Where did the big way? Language! Sounds like a good plan. Launch TIE Fighters. Oops. Absolutely love the shot of the TIE Fighter being launched as we see it from their perspective. That was a lot of good shots in this episode. Excellent cinematography. And Katan continues to fly toward the launch. We get a very rocky landing and they block any more TIE Fighters. And now that Boba doesn't have to put on show, he can focus on the TIE Fighters, and he very easily takes them out. Love the badass combo move. I don't... I didn't catch her name. Bo-Katan's friend, using her grappling hook, and then Bo-Katan, like, attack, you know, knee to the face. That's... yeah. Deploy Dark Troopers. Awesome. Clear. A little too clear. Absolutely love the shot of all the dark troopers powering up. You can see, like, there's got to be a couple dozen there on the one shot. And then the shots where you can see dozens of them walking out. My gun jammed. Is it raspberry? And Mando puts in the door locking thing. Love that one of the dark troopers manages to get his hands in the crack. Tear it open. Very Terminator 2. The elevator. And yeah, the Dark Trooper may not be able to destroy the Beskar of the helmet, but that doesn't mean his attacks don't hurt. Really cool seeing Mando struggle with the Dark Trooper. I really appreciate, like, they've created this really badass character, you know, right from the start. He's such a badass. And they keep finding ways to put him in situations that he can't badass his way out of, where he has to get creative or there's some kind of, yeah, just really love that. And the Beskar Spear helps him win, and he launches the rest of the Dark Troopers into space. Cardoon manages to unjam the gun, but not before we get several examples of Star Wars swearing. Gideon is smart, getting out the Darksaber, holding it to the kid, getting away from where Bo-Katan is, the whole... yeah. And he pretends that he's just going to let Mando... you know, and they start fighting. Darksaber on Beskar Spear. Super cool. The, so the showrunners know what the fans want. She can't take it. It must be won in battle. In order to take it from you, she'd have to defeat you in battle. How many life forms? None. They can fly in outer space, so they all flew back to the ship. Holy crap. And we see that Gideon is hiding a gun. I appreciate that it wasn't just a shot for the audience's benefit. It's, you know, the shot is him hiding it. Seal the blast doors. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. And the Dark Troopers stand really close to the door, punch it with their fists really hard. This is when the training from Master Pai Mei really pays off. One X-Wing. Great. We're saved. Actually, you are. I, I appreciate the... I think that's what they call lampshading. You know, like... Yeah. And the child senses Luke. I appreciate that at first we see through the monitor, like the security camera feed, before we get a close-up look at Luke. Gideon tries to shoot the child so Luke can't train him. Manda pulls the Secret Service move. Child touches the screen. And the Dark Troopers abandon punching the door to be ready for Luke. That really tells you, okay, they know, they are, that helps confirm that, underline that he's a badass. I'm not certain how many movie scenes I've watched where an elevator will ding and the door open and something cool happened, but it definitely isn't enough. Really badass scene. And Mando lets the child see his face. R2-D2 looks at the child and is like, Are you gonna hit me with a stick? Your granddad hit me with a stick. 
directed by Peyton Reed, very cool. And the post credit scene teases the Book of Boba Fett, which will be next week for me. Yeah, y'all had to wait a while. I can move directly into it. The, yeah, so I don't really do, right, obviously just briefly on the, the DA, uh, let's see, Luke is a combination of D.H. Mark Hamill, and there's like also a performer who's, you know, actually able to do those moves physically, I'm, I'm not sure Mark Hamill himself would be able to, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's like middle-aged by now, I, I don't blame him for no, no longer, anyway, yeah, the, the, you know, the, the de-aging was mostly really great, I, I think it was Rocks, New Rockstars who pointed out that, like, the, the mouth movements are just a tiny bit in the Uncanny Valley, but other than that, it's really great. It was a great surprise, obviously, you know, I, I figure pretty much everyone hoped that that was where they were going when, I, I mean, really, the moment that, we, I guess all the way back in episode one, where we see that it's the same species as Yoda, you know, and then they talk about, oh, you have to, you know, the, the, what was she called again? The, the Smith character, a blacksmith character, she told Mando, it is now your responsibility to get the child to a Jedi, and people are like, Luke? Could it be Luke? And then, you know, when the, when, when Grogu sends the signal, you know, it's, because we just got the, you know, uh, I'm bad with the names, what was, yeah, hmm, Rosaria Dawson's character, I forget her name, but she, you know, she was like, there aren't that many Jedi left, but you can go there and send a signal, again, you know, okay, so it's gotta be Luke, and it was Luke. I don't really usually do season reviews, but I think I will just say I thought they did great with guest stars, you know, the the major characters were all interesting. I think they gave them enough good character moments that they left uh, an impression. You know, the... Uh, I think I saw someone say that it was a bit more of a Monster of the Week thing, where the first season had a bit more of a focused plot. Yeah, that is that is true. I do think this season is better overall than the first one. The bigger budget helps, and just, yeah. I liked the guest characters from the first season they brought back. You know, especially, I keep forgetting his name, but Bill Burr's character. Uh, yeah, really loved seeing Boba. I think that the increased scope worked quite well. Several of the action scenes especially were really incredible due to the increased scope. The, you know, they kind of, they, the, the season premiere of this season was kind of just them showing off. Like, it was, you know, that giant, what was it called, crate Dragon? That was essentially, like, the, the Star Wars filmed show version of like a drum solo or something you're just you're just showing off at this point but we like it, it's enjoyable it's very enjoyable where you just you're just showing your mastery of the of the craft that was so cool seeing and yeah the rest of the season has delivered i think that is everything i i, I thought that they did a good job of incorporating both like i mean is yeah, like like uh, lore from the other move uh, from the lore from the movies, as well, and and like making you know taking from all three trilogies, as well as incorporating EU stuff that some people were understandably very frustrated with Disney for suddenly just saying nope doesn't matter anymore. 
yeah, the I I I really enjoyed it. I am very much looking forward to season three, and also to Book of Boba Fett, though apparently that one wasn't quite as well received as this. So we'll see. But yeah, that was it for this one. I will catch you next week.